are, are hanging in there. What, what, was, what was the difference in the second half that you know, allowed Tennessee to really run away with it, do you think? Um, I would just say we just got to play a lot harder. Um, we had it to six at half. Uh, we just let the lead go. And it's uh, frustrating, you know, like to have a well-played performance last game, you know, and come out and play the way we did tonight. So um, I would just say, like, in the second half stretches like that, man, we just really got to play harder. And, and then obviously, I know you're not playing inside, but they had 48 uh, pain points to do, really went to town. What what you think of their inside game and how dominating they were, whether it was dunks, follows, taking the ball the hole, whatever, they seemed to, you know, really take control inside? Um, their bigs are, like, really good at, you know, sealing the drive and ducking in hard. Um, and they just get easy points based off that. Um, so I would just say um, we just got to try to front, you know, get around, but do the best we can. But they're a really good team when it comes to, you know, front and sealing the drive, you know, getting a little uh, post position. Yeah, I mean, you guys had, I think, like a lot more assists, a lot more threes in the first half, and those they kind of died down in the second. Just do you feel like maybe – did you guys got a little bit sped up when they went on their run, or did the de did their defense change anything that kind of hurt y'all's offense in the second half? Um, I wouldn't say they sped us up, but I would say you know uh, we did stop moving the ball a little bit, um, and you know uh, that happens in times where you know when uh, the game is close and they end up going on a run, and you know uh, we don't withstand the run, so we tend to do that as a team, all of us. How, how just this is the third, you know third opportunity to maybe win back-to-back -back games in the STC and, and it's another loss. Just how frustrating has it been? Just you guys haven't been able to maybe to go on that run and try and win some back-to-back -back games here. Um, It's frustrating, you know, to, like I said before, you know, have a performance like we did and, you know, just come out and not be able to get a uh, second one in the row, you know, try to get on that run, you know, try to get some momentum going. So we just got to continue to stand in gym work as a team and keep fighting. Yeah, obviously Dalton connects a guy for Tennessee who's on a lot of NBA draft boards and, you know, he's probably a front runner for newcomer of the year. Can you just talk about what he brought to the game and how difficult he was for you guys to defend? Um, he's a he's a good player, you know. Um scores at three levels. Um three balls mid range to get to the rim. Um but I would say um we just gotta be tougher with him, gotta be more physical. Um, but he played really well. He's a really good player. Yeah, well, you, you guys play a lot of ranked teams. How how good is Tennessee? How do you think they've stacked up against some of the other really good teams you've played? Um, I would say they're one of the I would say they're one of the best teams, you know, that we don't play as a ranked team. You know, they're physical, they play together, they move the ball. Um, they're well coached. They have a really good, you know, surrounding guys players. So, you know, I feel like that's one of the best teams that we've played this season. So one of my Mississippi State. You guys gotta go back on the road and you you gotta play a team that had has had a bye. You already had to do that. It's pretty tough. I don't think a team that's had a bye, maybe has played team without a bye, has lost. Just how tough, Mississippi State's a tough place to play, but how tough is the challenge when they've had a bye and you haven't? Um, I feel like it's good for us. Um, since we haven't had a bye, we weren't, you know, just practicing. So we had some game, we had a game. Um, I would say we just really just got to come play for 40 minutes. We can't play for 20 minutes like we did tonight. Um, we got to play for a full 40. We got to compete the whole game, you know. Um, and it's, Mississippi State's a tough place to play at. So just got to be come on ready to play.
Auburn, a, a competitive type first half where you guys hung with the team and then second half was a different story. What was working first half that you thought kept in it and then maybe what went wrong second? Yeah, uh, Kevin, I thought the sec- – I mean, first and second half, we gave up 46 points. So defensively, not much different, not good either half defensively. Uh, Tennessee, more physical than us, uh, created more turnovers. The points off turnovers was a killer. Uh, we've talked about our inability at times to take care of the basketball. Live ball turnovers was a, was a huge, huge problem tonight. Um, Tennessee had a better competitive spirit that was plain to see. And, um, you know, now the schedule hadn't done us any favors. I mean, now we're the last SEC game on a Wednesday night. Mississippi State has off, and we go there. So uh, it's the second time it's happened to us in the last couple of weeks. No excuses. It's a schedule we have, but uh, not easy knowing, again, why we couldn't play on a Tuesday. Not sure why we're the last game on Wednesday and then have a, another early game, not a late game on Saturday. So a very, very quick turnaround uh, for our team. And we got we to gotta, we gotta draw free throws attempted. That's our game is getting to the foul line. Tennessee's a very, very physical team. Uh, Tennessee opponents, I think, in SEC play, average over 22 free throws attempted. Tonight we get 15. We had a goal of trying to get there to the 30. We thought that was a realistic goal. We got half of those. Um, so either we got we got to do a better job, I guess, playing through contact or initiating contact because um, that was a big part of the game plan, and we were unable uh, to get free throws attempted. Yeah, Eric, um, he's, he's a big dude, but I think he had double his average tonight. He's phenomenal. He's, he keeps getting better. You know, what you want to see out of players is, is player, player improvement, and uh, you can tell he gets in the gym. Uh, his mid-range shot from where it was 24, so much improved. Like, he can, he can make that shot. He's big. He's physical. He, he ducks in. Um, I think he's – Again, I, like I said, I think he's one of the most improved players um, that our league has. Uh, he's a big who rebounds the ball, plays really, really, really hard. Um, I thought that really a do and and uh, Ganey were the two differences in the game. game. And Ganey had 17 points in 16 minutes off the bench, and uh, you know hit hit two of their five threes. I thought we I thought we actually guarded. Um, a lot of their really, really good shooters from deep. Well, I mean, Ziegler's a guy that can make threes. Viscobi and Ziegler were one of six. That was a big part of the game plan. We did a good job defending those guys. Um, Dalton Connect is is a guy that I think had seven th- or six or seven threes in his last game that he made uh, between Ziegler and and Viscobi and Dalton Connect. If you would have told me that they would only make two threes and we would lose by this much, I would have said there's no possible way. But there is a possible way. And uh, do help help them really dominate in the paint. Um, how you guys have been pretty good in the paint these last few games. How how tough was that? And, and Makai didn't seem to play as well as he has. Kind of what, what was the difference in their paint points and Makai maybe just an off night? I yeah, I mean I thought they got whatever they wanted in the paint tonight. I thought that um, you know hard post ups and physical post ups, and they established. Uh, post position and when you catch the ball that deep it's pretty hard to stop somebody yeah coach just uh i mean it's it seemed like they were open to letting you guys shoot threes do you think maybe you settled and the shot selection was it was good or was it something that maybe you guys didn't quite pound the paint as much as you have in previous games i mean we were at, you know i mean first half we were six of 13 um so i thought we did a good job obviously in the second half you know two of ten yeah Maybe if we would have gone two for six, you know, so maybe, you know, yeah, maybe we took four too many threes, you know, but I mean, when you're down by that much, you're going to shoot three. So, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think that that was again. Yeah. I would, I would have liked to have taken four less threes maybe, but I mean, if you look at the percentages, it's, you know, that's not really what lost the game. And they had, you mentioned their live ball turnovers. Is there like, the turnovers that you guys that didn't you guys force that didn't turn into live ball turnovers and easy points. I mean, is that just rotten luck or is there something maybe there that, you know, steals and you guys can maybe do a better job of capitalizing on their turnovers. Yeah. I mean, I, 
I think we need to do a better job in a lot of areas, but certainly if you have 12 steals, that's a, uh, you know, it's a, that's a pretty good number. It's more steals than they had. And yeah, we need to convert those for sure. Um, Eric, I don't, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I know you guys shot like 52 in the first half. They shot 54 and in the second half, obviously yours went down. I think Tennessee was right at that or, I mean, what was the key to them shooting 50 plus in both halves, at least when their, their starters were in? I think they're ranked eighth in the country. Um, they can do that to a lot of people and they, they have done that to a lot of people. And um, we didn't, we didn't play hard enough in the second half defensively, plain and simple. And in the first half, I thought we worked. I just, they just got really good players and, and um, it was a six point game at halftime. Two more if that's okay. I think Jimmy Dykes doing the game. He said something like that, that version of Tennessee's final four. And you played a bunch of ranked teams this year. How how good does Tennessee? I mean, how do they stack up? How good do you think they are? Well, on a night like tonight, I you know you'd think they're as good as anybody in the country. Um, I mean, this league is loaded. Uh, that team's really well coached, and um, you know their comp their competitive spirits is as good as any team that we've played. And they were coming off a loss, and and you know we tried to tell our guys what what they would be like when you're, when you're ranked eighth in the country and you come off a loss. Um, they're really good. I, I mean, I don't know what else to tell you, Bob. They just beat us by 29 points. They're pretty damn good basketball team. And then Bruce Pearl, I can't remember, somebody beat Auburn pretty bad the other day when they'd had a bye and Auburn was playing two games. And I think Bruce Pearl said something to the effect of if, if you're playing a team that has a bye and you've played twice, that second game, you should get it home. Um, in other words, you, you should get to play at home. Like, I don't want to get fined. Yeah. I don't want to, like, I just said, like, it's like the turnaround when you have the last game twice it's happened to us. And then you play at 11 a.m. in Baton Rouge, and then you play a game at, I don't know what it is, 1 o'clock. We're not, like, unless you play the game or coach the game, an extra four hours does matter <laughs> when you have a short turnaround. And so, you know, I'd, I wish we would have played Tuesday night knowing, but, you know, you get the schedule that people give you. You don't make it's not an excuse. We got to go play the game. But look at the numbers on what's happened on, you know, around the league. It's it's a it's a hard game. And we got to go get ready for a team that's been prepping for us uh, for a week. And so it is what it is. We had it with Georgia. And now, you know, this will be our second time doing it. Maybe it should come up at the comp, at the meet, coaches meeting. Yeah, I, mean, I got bigger things to worry about than playing the late game and then an early game. I know with the paint difference being what it was, but still second consecutive game, a good three-point defense overall. And then all 12 of their turnovers were steals, another area where you guys have struggled most of the season. Were there some positives to build on from this game despite the margin? Yeah, Kevin, it's like you plug this hole, and then, the, I mean, that's that's what I'm doing. That's what we are doing is, as, as, you know, like, yes, we recognized uh, three-point defense was killing us. <laughs> so we hunker down, we work on it, and that's a really, like, that's a team that, that, I said Dalton Connect made six or seven threes last game alone. We did a pretty good job on, on a guy averaging 25 or 26 points a game. We didn't do a good job on Justin Ganey. Um, when you play Tennessee and, the, and, and, the, and they score 92 points and they only make five threes, you know, and that's a team that's experienced, old, 12 steals. I don't know. I, I don't have – the Cume stats in front of me, but I'm not sure they probably have 12 steals very often. And so those are two areas that we really focused on. And then, then you, you know, slip in another area. I mean, that's, that's where we're at, you know, but yeah, it's been a point of emphasis for the last week. We corrected those, but you know, 